then uh and then i i went over friends houses and i was like oh my god your parents drink booze and then they don't like break stuff <laughs> this is the most amazing thing on the planet um and the same thing with uh with with marijuana i i thought it was this terrible demon drug because one, one of my first roommates uh when i was like 18 when i moved out um he was the laziest piece of shit on the planet and i thought it was because of the weed and then i realized like oh he's just a lazy piece of shit that smokes weed <laughs> like no wait he, it, 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 I've, oh, I've been it. so i'm not a marijuana expert in terms of experience okay but um it sure does seem like there's a correlation there like there are a lot so? of lazy people who smoke marijuana and i know I, there's different strains and it. such and some of it make you lazy and some of it makes you actually go getter but yeah, I mean, the main difference I would say, I mean, if you talked about like uh, sativas and indicas, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, it, it's, it's a difference between head stuff and more like straight up body downer kind mm -hmm. of stuff, which if you're waking up and you're taking body downer stuff, you're probably a piece of shit. Um, but, but I mean, for me, I know that a big part of it is uh, like before I go to bed, I don't want to take sleeping pills because I'm going to wake up super crazy groggy and... I don't want to take like I don't want to take an antidepressant or anything like that. It's just for me instead of like drinking tonight just because I was like let's do that. I, I like to know that like 9 p.m. if I'm gonna go to sleep at 10, I can just I can uh, I can either take a small edible if I don't want to use a vaporizer or I can use a vaporizer, do a little, and I know that I'll just I'll sleep perfect. I'll wake up and I'll be refreshed because anytime. I think the thing that I'm re uh, I think is really scary are pills. Pills are fucking crazy scary, and I've seen a lot of friends kind of go down that route, and I can't even imagine because I know that uh, a few years ago, about five years ago, I had a kidney stone and I got Percocet mm -hmm. um, for the pain, and mm -hmm. that's some shit that, that I can see being deal. addictive. Yeah, that's some real deal. Knock They're you mind out. Numbing. Yeah, you're, 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 you're you're you 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 don't know anymore. who. You, yeah, you're you kind don't know of just who you like, are. You're kind of like sitting in a body and you're like, ooh. Yeah, I mean, because <laughs> This all is I a know, new existence. Yeah, I, all I know is I started taking Percocet while I had that kidney stone. And then four days later, I just didn't have that kidney stone anymore. At some time, I passed it. That's mm. it. Yeah. Um, and so that's some scary stuff. I think, I don't know. I'm not one of those people, though, that I'm like, everyone should be able to smoke, man. But I think that at the very least, it should be decriminalized uh, and available for medicinal reasons. For medicinal reasons? I also yeah, think it should be decriminalized. For medicinal reasons, though, I decriminalize everything. Like, so, I mean, that's that's a good thing, too. If, if, if it's something that doesn't affect other people and it's for adults then at what point do we take off the fucking kid gloves? So, you know, so that's that's a question. For marijuana, I just feel like the, the prosecution of it does more harm than good. Um, yeah. I'm not, I, I'm not, still not really in favor of everyone smoking all the time. I'm afraid mm -hmm. that, you know, that that might be a, a bad thing. But certainly what's even worse thing is throwing people in jail for it and such. When it comes to, I'll say, like, like pick a bad one, like heroin, right? It comes from this experience. My, um, my I had a coworker who was a friend of mine. And his mother was dying. She had cancer. She was old. And she wasn't going to live. So all they really did was make her comfortable and treat her pain. And they used morphine. And it didn't do the trick. She was still in a lot of pain. They couldn't control her pain as she headed towards death. So take that experience and couple it with like, I don't know, heroin's illegal. Dude, if a doctor's prescribing it, in a situation like hers especially, I'm down for anything anything get right to take away that pain yeah. heroin meth and cocaine and whatever else might make acid i don't care right i did guide her off into into the end uh painless and yeah. you know if, if you trust doctors which i do <clears throat> then everything gets decriminalized and you just yeah, have to I, trust that you know doctors are prescribing it for the right reason yeah, it's, it becomes a question of, because, I mean, the number one thing that people talk about when they start comparisons, um, look at the harm that, that booze causes, you know, like yeah, li that. liquor in general, right? But, I mean, it's, that's an argument of if something's bad, let's make all things bad. But it is something where you look at it and, I mean, other people have said it, when was, <laughs> if you go to a party and there's no booze, you're like, what the fuck is this party? That's... <laughs> 
but it's also a drug that kills so many people, whether it be from alcohol poisoning or the effects of them getting behind uh, a vehicle, you know? So it, the argument against everyone's going to smoke weed and become like these stupid idiots that are crashing cars everywhere or these lazy pieces of shit, it becomes kind of moot because when was the last time you went anywhere that you couldn't get weed? Right? Anywhere. Any I don't know where to get weed. Yeah. I you don't know, know anywhere? <laughs> yeah, literally, if I had cancer, I'd be like reaching out to subs and stuff. Like, can someone give me a source? I don't, I don't know how to get weed. <laughs> well, I don't know. With, with that haircut, they're going to be like, you're a narc, aren't you? You're a goddamn narc. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd be like going to local colleges. Hello, fellow students. <laughs> <laughs> can I score some marijuana cigarettes? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that, that's where I'd be. So yeah, but I, I guess I'd, I'd figure it out somehow. But yeah, that's, that's like my go-to thing. Like, um, my brother had cancer twice and it impacted his appetite. And of course it made him nauseous or um, yeah, nauseous. So marijuana, it can be good with both those things. It can help you get your appetite back and it can help you control nausea. It's like, ah, oh, that seems like a fit. You know, yeah. it, it seemed better than the stuff that they were getting from the hospital. At the very least, a reclassification. I mean, to say marijuana has no medical benefits, like in its current class, that's crazy. I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just, what I object to sometimes is the people who act like it's a health food. You know, like, oh, oh yeah, oh, like, about, like, I take it as scale. a prophylactic against glaucoma. You know, I want to make sure that never comes to me. That's why I'm toking up. It's actually good <laughs> for you. It's it's respiratory exercise. It's like, no, just, come on, dude. You know, I'll admit it's not as bad as alcohol. We're all sort of there. I think everyone's kind of figured that out. But um, the notion that it's that it's a health food or something, that I think you're just taking it too far. Yeah, let's admit it's yep. a minor vice. Um. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever done it? Uh, yeah. Oh, should I not ask that question? Uh, uh -oh. Never mind. Hey, hey Woody. I kind of answered uh, it, didn't I? <laughs> what's, what's the newest survey you just launched on WoodyCraft.net? <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'll skip that thing. Uh, and I can tell you, as I've never been into it, and I don't know if I ever did it properly. I've, I've certainly never had a good high. I respect it. The the bill. Clinton. You didn't inhale. I like did. Our good old I, I did. President. I don't know. But you know what? I guess I'll I'll tell Barack Obama. Didn't he write in it? Didn't Barack talk about storing cocaine in his book? He yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a hypocrite on the issue. Is he? Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Right. I mean, whether you talk about in 08, he said he wouldn't use funds, and then they, well, under his administration, they raided a lot of places, more so than Bush. And, mm. and I, mean, I mean, I understand politically the, the saying, like, you know, I'm president, but uh, other people, those are, the, those are the people that you got to talk to as far as the legalization. If enough of this, because well, the most recent thing he said, if enough of the states do it, then Congress mm. will have to. I uh, saw that. To talk about it for federal. I mean, it's just, I mean, the whole federal state thing's a whole fucking crazy clusterfuck. You know what? I want to answer the pot question. I'm coming around uh -oh. to it. Uh -oh. I did it as an adult, a grown man. And part of my motivation was I felt like I wanted to get educated on it as a parent. Um, it wasn't to get high. I, it really wasn't. I, it wasn't like, oh, I totally need this to enjoy the situation or whatever. And um, <clears throat> I was out of the country, a place where, I don't know if it was legal or not, but it certainly was... A place where man's laws did not apply. <laughs> True. <laughs> and, uh, you hunt man for game. <clears throat> and the, the people I was on trip with were more experienced with it than me. They made a bong out of an apple. And um, I, uh, I, I, I inhaled deep. They were all like, whoa, and coughed and stuff. And afterwards, I, it seemed to have no effect. They said that I was talking a lot, but that's every day. And um, uh, and then I guess the next year I tried it again, and it was like an awful kind. I think it made me nauseous. Like, is that a thing that marijuana sometimes does? I mean, there no, you can it's have supposed bad, to be the opposite of that. I I mean, you can you can have different experiences. I mean, I <coughs> one of the first times I ever had it, I uh, or did it, um, I felt like I was having a heart attack, and I was just like, and I'm gonna lay in this bed for twelve hours 
terrified of the world. Uh, the first that was time my first, that was my first experience with edibles. That's my, scary. My first experience, I felt like it had no attack, no effect at all. My second mm -hmm. one, um, I, I think it gave me a headache or something, and uh, and I, I did never had anything pleasurable happen from it. And maybe I'm just not wired for it. I don't know. But know. yeah, the, the motivation, like I said, was honestly, it wasn't like for a high or anything like that. It was like, well, I'd, I kind of want to know what the scoop is. And I feel like I still didn't get it, though. Like, I, I need that thing that people like to know what the whole deal is with it. What I have apparently is a tiny minority because there's hardly anyone who uses pot and who goes, yeah, it's terrible. It sucks. You know, but but that's where I am. Yeah. So I want that to be the thing you said to the guy that was passing it to you, though. Let me see what the scoop is on this. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Maybe I've just watched one too many Joe Rogan uh, documentaries, but I feel like we need to be doing acid. I feel like we need to see what that's all no, about. No, man. I so I, I love I love Rogan. I hopped on. I like I listen to him so much. But when he starts talking about that spacey world could be a simulation, like we're all a droplet. I'm like, stop it. <laughs> stop. No, I know exactly no. what you mean. Like he's I was like, I, res I respect but it. Mm-hmm. All that Sorry, shit with like, oh, mushrooms, uh, monkeys ate mushrooms, and that made us, them us, and now, you know, this is science, and then he has like some crackpot on there who's like, yeah, I mean, it's like <laughs> totally, totally legit, uh, and like Joe is like legitimately, you know, he's really, he wants to believe that stuff is true more than he actually believes it, I think, like I think so. he's intrigued by the idea of it, because he seems like a smart dude, obviously, mm -hmm. but just the way he's like, uh, and they theorize that by panspermia an asteroid with a mushroom on it landed and then it started growing in cow shit and monkeys ate out of cow shit and it's like dude we're already six leaps down the rabbit hole and none of this <laughs> means anything it means yeah. that there were monkeys that were getting high can we still eat them to further improve our mental state because when people <laughs> eat them they kind of just look like they're tripping out and not with reality at all he, he, like <laughs> he takes these psychedelics and then he acts like he's having new th well he says he's having new thoughts and he's expanding his brain and he's thinking about the world in ways and everyone should do this so that their brains can have experienced the stuff that his has right like we need these out of this world crazy thoughts but what i hear is out of this world crazy thoughts it, they seem to have no value to me I don't know. I don't know if I know that when he talks about certain things, he, he talks about how people have heard him and that's why they want to try it. I don't know if he says I, I don't know if we should quote him saying that everyone should try it because I know that like my big thing is I will probably never do like a straight up hallucinogenic like acid because uh, I don't I don't want what's in here thrust out <laughs> into the world at all. <laughs> that seems like a bad day because uh, I don't know what will come out. I think because the, the craziest thing I've ever done, and it was like one time, was Molly. That's it. And that's essentially Adderall with a bigger smile. That's it. That sounds like a great time. <laughs> I mean, it's a fantastic time. It, it makes you feel like you could just have sex for 12 hours straight. But I, it's I one of those things I would never recommend. You can't? <laughs> in general I think, I think after a while I'm like I got stuff to do I'm 29 years old okay <laughs> I have a prescription for Adderall and if I have like a, a real work day ahead of me where I have to like be going from dusk till dawn I'll take 10 milligrams of Adderall to start the day and then 10 more around lunchtime and I'm just go 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 oh, version of me the, like the one pop, pop yeah. shots those are scary that's how you feel like you're having a heart attack I really? doesn't my heart rate's a little bit faster, but it's not like blum 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 blum. It's nothing. Cra it's nothing ever scary. I'm just like, it's time to work now. <laughs> like I remember, like, I because I, I've always had the like the time release, and it's like a no, a nice slow like. Oh, okay, I'm here. I'm more. I'm more in the moment. But two VidCons ago, uh, I ran out of my prescription because my like doctor was on some trip. I wasn't able to do anything, so my friend gave me his. But it was like the the one the one thing, and I just remember I was on a panel with the Fine Bros, and like some guy I'd never heard from from Maker, and the entire time I was up there, I, I had taken a little extra right before I went on. I thought I was going to die in front of everyone, and it was the most terrifying experience of my why, life. Why was there some? What made you think you were gonna die? Because my well, because one like. If you take too much, then you just then you're it's essentially just like the biggest up one of the biggest legal uppers on the market. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden my heart's pumping. And then I hear this guy from Maker spouting this bullshit that I was getting so angry about because he was talking about how he could successfully market 20,000 channels uh, at the same level. Right. And it was just like 
there's so many small people that you're not getting to. And so I was like getting really worked up and, but I was like you trying to keep it inside. Your hands are clammy probably. Oh you're yeah. Just... And I, I'm just like, oh my God. And so I just let the fine bros ream them like they always do very successfully. I, I've tried Adderall one day and I didn't notice it. No? Yeah, you're just not affected by substances. <laughs> oh, maybe you're like, maybe like Bruce hero. Willis and Unbreakable. <laughs> <gasps> Have you ever been sick, Woody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't stop coughing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really like Adderall. I, I um, I, I, I like to take it. Like I said, when there's a big work day ahead, and I feel so much more positively positive about the work that has to be done. It's like normally I'd be I'd feel like it was drudgery, like ah I gotta go out and I gotta dig fence pole holes and uh, fence pole uh, holes and I've gotta put in all this stuff and I've gotta do this fencing and I've gotta build this structure and weld all this stuff up. It's like I don't want to do that, but then I'll take Adderall and like eat some cereal and I'm just like we're gonna work now. Oh, yeah. all the kinds of work. Yeah, let me get my tools. Let me get my tool belt. Like you just you just want to do stuff and I'm excited yeah. about what needs to be done and like I, and I even want to do it well. So, I get uh, that naturally. Not not always the anticipation of work, like you described it, but the completion is like I, I get a big reward out of that. That's, uh, my reward system works that way. I, if, heck, today I installed a bunch of light bulbs, and um, it seems like nothing, but it was eleven light bulbs, which is a good amount. And I had like fixtures to disassemble and reassemble. And when I was done, it was like, yeah. You know, I called my wife. Hey, I got all the light bulbs in. <laughs> you know, she's like, "That's great." Did you get the hallway? Yeah, I got the hallway. It was hard, <laughs> but it's perfect now. And you know, it, it was hard. I had to disassemble and whatever. Like I, there, I've done long-term tasks like woodworking and stuff that takes me three minutes, three but months to finish a piece, just because I know done, the high at the end. But see, with have Adderall, you ever done it with be a, even better? Have you ever done it with a resting heart rate of 140 feet? Per <laughs> no, because until not. you've done that, you've not been at peak, uh, peak performance, I promise you. Dude, my heart rate, I, I don't know if it's true anymore, but like when I was in college, incredibly high. Like, I, really? my, Yeah, I'd hit like 250. What? That's not, no, it didn't. <laughs> You're not a squirrel. Like, yeah, no, like it every, did. So every like, three minutes? It, it so what would happen is we'd train right like in swimming i was a collegiate swimmer and we train we train and then they'd ask people to like do their heartbeat a, i measured it myself lower. oh they're like the, the, the way they say to do it is you take 220 and you subtract your age which would be about you know 200 for me is my maximum heart rate at the time but you'd measure it and and people wouldn't believe me so then they'd measure it themselves you know and these are other swimmers coaches people who know how to take a heart rate and then i've used the um you know the electric kind that like goes around your chest that's just a thing. My heart used to go fast. Were you were you like the the you big kid are on the Bruce swim Willis team from Unbroken? Was I what? Is, were you like the big kid on the swim team? Because if you're because if you're on the swim team, I imagine you're pretty in shape. Because usually yeah. people that are in shape have a lower resting. Yeah, I broke like records high school, college. Um, even as a freshman, I was the, like one of the leading point. Getters. Oh wait, yeah, four beats per second. Like, yeah, you are Bruce Willis. Yeah, I failed a um. Uh, for the lifeguard thing, you know, they you take annual physicals. I failed it because my heart rate was too quick. They made me go and get like an EKG and stuff, and I had to get like a second doctor's it's opinion. It's couldn't possibly be this high. <laughs> I love how Kyle's face as you say this. He's like, no, it's not. Oh, no, you're I'm, still just not imagine, it? I'm just thinking to myself, is he a superhero? Yeah, no, because at this because point we like, had like fellow athletes, coaches, electronic measuring devices, and doctors with electronic measuring I devices. I believe you. Yeah, I'm just it's wondering if you are in fact a superhero. No, I'm old now. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm nothing. So else. was Bruce Willis in Unbreakable. <laughs> yeah, but um, but th that was always the thing. Like my heart went. Like I, I don't even know if it's healthy. Like to have it go quick like that. I think no. we need to shoot yeah. you in the arm just to be. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, that's like hamster speed. <laughs> How long does a hamster Cause, live? Because, because I mean, months? worst case scenario, you got a cool scar to brag about. Best case scenario, you turn out to be some sort of invincible Superman, and we can start marketing that. <laughs> this sounds like a hard idea. Distance I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need you for some videos if you're bulletproof. <laughs> you're I like, mean, didn't Bruce Willis get hurt? I he guess he's never even had only an injury. By, only by water. Yeah, his weakness was that he could not swim. <laughs> 